JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 31st. I am Haralambo Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Wednesday during the Asian session Thursday. It gained against AUD, JPY, CAD and NZD in that order, while it lost ground versus uh, the Euro, the Swiss franc and the British pound. The strengthening of the Euro and the weakening of the, of the Japanese yen suggests uh, that the markets may have continued trading in a risk on uh, manner yesterday and today in Asia. However, the strengthening of the Swiss franc and the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie point, uh, point otherwise. Therefore, with the effects uh, market painting and blurry picture with regards to the broader market uh, sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that major European and US indices traded in negative waters with the reduced risk appetite rolling into the Asian session today. Among the indices under our radar, only UK's FTSE 100 and South Korea's KOSPI traded in the green. Remember that on Tuesday, equity markets climbed higher due, um, uh, due to Russia and Ukraine announcing progress in uh, peace talks held in Turkey. In what it was described as the most tangible sign of progress until now, Russia promised uh, to scale down military operations around Kiev and uh, northern Ukraine, while Ukraine expressed willingness to adopt a neutral uh, status. That said, yesterday headlines said that Russian, uh, that Russian forces uh, bombarded uh, the outskirts of Kiev and the city in, um, in uh, northern Ukraine. This may have come as a surprise, uh, given the, uh, the headlines we got after the peace talks. And the market participants therefore got disappointed and scaled back their hope bets over a potential uh, resolution soon. Another reason for the setback in equities may have been that a lot of uh, fund managers may have been rebalancing their portfolios due to the end of the month. Now, as for our view, we prefer to wait for the turn of the month to see how much of a disappointment uh, Russia's, uh, Russia's uh, actions were and how much of just a rebalancing yesterday's selling was. For now, market participants may turn their attention away from the war and lock their gaze on tomorrow's preliminary euro area inflation data as well as the US jobs report. Accelerating inflation in the Eurozone may add to speculation that the ECB may need to start raising rates sooner than previously anticipated, while a strong employment report in the US, especially accompanied by accelerating wages, could add to chances of a 50 basis points hike at the Fed's upcoming gathering and a steeper rate path uh, thereafter. Now, as for today's events, during the Asian session, we already got... Uh, the Chinese PMIs for March, with both the manufacturing and services indices sliding to contractionary territory for the first time since the peak of the nation's COVID outbreak in 2020. This may have been another reason uh, investors abandoned uh, stocks during the Asian trading today. A few hours ago, the UK final GDP for the fourth quarter was out, with the final print being revised up to 1.3% quarter over quarter from 1%. Later, we get Germany's and Eurozone's unemployment rates for March and February, respectively. The German one is expected to have held steady at 5%, while Eurozone's is forecast to have ticked down to 6.7% from 6.8%. 
Now from the US we have the personal income and spending data for February as well as the core PC index for uh, the same month which is the Fed's uh, favorite inflation metric. Personal income is expected to have risen 0.5% month over month after stagnating in January, while spending is forecast to have slowed to 0.5% month over month from 2.1%. No forecast is available for the core PCE index, but bearing in mind that the core CPI rose to 6.4% year over year from 6%, we would consider the risk as tilted, uh, um, the risks as tilted to the upside. However, at this point, we need to to point out that although it is the Fed's uh, preferred inflation gauge, the core PC index is not a major market mover, and this is because we get the CPIs well in advance. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. Uh, at this point, I need to inform you that uh, there will be no weekly Market Outlook webinar for uh, April the 4th and April the 11th, but there will also be no daily market review until April the 11th. We will have the next uh, daily market review on April the 12th. Um, you can find the link for the Weekly Market Outlook webinar in the description below. And up until April the 12th, I hope you have a great time, uh, a great uh, next week. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again uh, here on our Daily Market Review video on April uh, the 12th. So, again... Have a nice day and goodbye. JFT, just fair and direct.